So in this lesson, we're going to talk about corresponding parts of congruent figures, or what, what you're going to do after you prove triangle is congruent. So it turns out, um, proving triangle is congruent isn't the final goal. It's, it's just a tool to getting information from the fact that triangles are congruent. So let me show you what I mean by this. Here I have a pair of congruent triangles. I have triangle ABC, congruent to triangle XYZ, and I've written the congruent statement. And one thing that's very important about this congruent statement is if I simply just look at triangle ABC by itself, I could give triangle ABC six different names. I could call it triangle BAC, I could call it triangle CBA, I could call it triangle ACB. There's six different names I could give to this triangle depending on where I start and which way I go around the triangle. Likewise, there are six different names for the other triangle XYZ. I could call it triangle you know, XYZ or triangle ZYX or triangle ZXY or whatever. However, when I write a triangle congruence statement, I'm free to choose the order of one of the triangles. Like here, I could say triangle ABC like I've done. But the congruence statement has to show how the parts, how the vertices of the triangles pair up with each other. That is, when I write triangle ABC, and then I say it's congruent to triangle XYZ, I am saying that these triangles are congruent and I'm saying something more. I'm saying the vertex at X go, it corresponds with the vertex at A, the vertex at A corresponds with the vertex at X. I'm saying the vertex at B corresponds with the vertex at Y. And I'm saying the vertex at C corresponds with the vertex at Z. So the intuitive way to understand that is, as I'm saying, as when I match these up, that if I were to try to pick this triangle up and lay it so it matches with this one, I'd have to put A on top of X, B on top of Y, C on top of Z. That's sort of the intuitive notion of that. And if I were to rename one of my triangles, like if I were to say triangle CBA instead of triangle ABC, then I would have to, if I'm gonna write my congruence statement correctly, I would have to switch the other one around. So here I've reversed the order. I've gone CBA in writing this. So I'd have to write Z, Y, X in the reverse order. So this congruent statement carries information about how the triangles pair up with each other. C goes with Z, B goes with Y, A goes with X. And you can see here what I'm trying to indicate is this triangle would sort of fold over and reflect onto this other triangle here. When you know that triangles are congruent, remember that congruence means um, informally. Means same shape and same size. A consequence of that, that these triangles have exactly the same shape and have exactly the same size, is that if you know that they're congruent, which I've stated here, then you know that each part, each measurement of this triangle is gonna match up with the measurement of this triangle. There are six basic measurements in a triangle, the three side lengths and the three angle measurements. And though I don't know how long any of them are, I do know that certain ones have to match. First of all, let's look at the angles. If I look at this congruent statement here, this tells me that C corresponds with Z. So that tells me that I'm going to get three, hold on, let me back up. I'm going to get three angle congruences. And I'm also going to get three side congruences. Okay, I'm going to, and the way I can tell what matches with what is I can look here at the congruent statement. So here this tells me C corresponds with Z. So that tells me angle C has to be the same as angle Z. They are congruent angles. Likewise, angle B corresponds with angle Y and angle A with X. You can see that in the picture, sort of, but it's spelt out clearly here. So I can say angle B 
corresponds with angle Y. And I can say angle A is congruent to angle X. And of course, I could use the long three letter names. I could say angle A, B, C corresponds with angle X, Y, Z. This is one, three of the things that you can deduce from the triangles being congruent. The other three things you can deduce are that the sides have to be congruent. And again, you can read this directly off of the congruence statement. I could say CB has to be congruent to ZY. I could say CA has to be congruent to ZX. And I could say BA has to be congruent to YX. So you can deduce all six of these things from the fact that you know that the triangles are congruent. So let's look at how we actually use this when we're doing proofs. So here's an example. So here I have a problem with some given information and what we're going to prove. And right away, I want to point out that we're not asked to prove that triangles are congruent here. We're asked to prove that BC is congruent to AD. Let me emphasize that pretty much all of our proofs in this unit and for most of the semester are going to be triangle congruence proofs. We're going to have to prove that triangles are congruent in order to get something like this. So don't think that we're done with triangle congruence. If your proof does not have a triangle congruence statement in it, it is probably incorrect. So I've given some steps here, which I'll keep referring I've given some steps which I'll keep referring to as I do these problems. My first step is going to be to mark the givens. So I have AB congruent to CD. And I have angle 1 congruent to angle 2. So that's handy. So now I've marked my givens. Now, step 2, there's a lot I said here. It says, look for two triangles that you can prove congruent and then we'll give you what you want to prove. What I'm saying here is look for two triangles that A, you have enough information to prove congruent, and then B will actually give you what you want. You want to prove that BC is congruent to AD. In later problems, this will become harder. There'll be more triangles in the picture and you'll have to look carefully and say, which pair of triangles is the pair of triangles that I want to prove congruent? In these earlier ones, it's fairly straightforward because there's only two triangles given in the picture. So it's going to be clearly it's going to be these two triangles. So these triangles are what I'm going to try to prove congruent. And in doing so, it will tell me that BC and AD have to be congruent because they will be corresponding parts of those triangles. So step three, complete the missing info to get SAS, SSS, or ASA. If I look at what I have tick marked here, I have a pair of sides. I have a pair of angles. So I have SA, so probably I'm not going to do SSS. I'm either going to do SAS or I'm going to do ASA. And it's very common to see in these problems two triangles that have a segment that is a, segment for, that is a side for both triangles. If I look at the top triangle here, cover up the bottom one, okay? I cover up the bottom triangle, AC is a side of the bottom triangle. And if I cover up the top triangle, AC is the side of the bottom triangle. So that's what we called a shared segment. It has to be congruent to itself. Now if I look at the tick mark pattern, on the top triangle I have side, angle, side. On the bottom triangle I have side, angle, side. So these two triangles now have the SAS tick mark pattern and so I will have enough, um, I have enough information to prove that they're congruent. So so far it's not very different than what we did the other day. So I'm going to write up my triangle congruence now. I have a pair of sides, AB congruent to CD, and that was given. I have a pair of angles, angle 1 congruent to angle 2, that was also given. And my last pair of sides is the shared segment AC congruent to AC. Everything is always congruent to itself. 
So this is my side angle side pattern. Side angle side, these two triangles have the SAS pattern. So given those three things, that is enough information to deduce that the triangles have to be congruent. Now here's the first place where these problems can differ from what we've already done. And that's simply that you have to write your own triangle congruence statement here. You have to write your own triangle congruence statement. So I'm going to get my colored pencils out here. So you have to name the tri one of the triangles, and then you have to name the other one in the corresponding order. So for SAS, I recommend that you go around past the two sides. You could go the other way, but I'm going to choose to go this way past the two sides that you knew were congruent and visit the vertices in that order. So I'm going B, A, C. That's how I'm going to name my first triangle. When I do this, if you look what I've done here, I've gone past the first tick mark side and then the second tick mark side. I have to do this in the same order or else I'll get the order wrong down here. So if I went first tick mark side, second tick mark side, now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go in that order. So this is going to be named D, C, A. Sometimes this order will be very obvious. Others, it's a little trickier. When they're rotated like this, it can be a little trickier. Underneath, I need a reason. My reason is the condition that I use to show that they're congruent. So it's going to be S, A, S. And here's our last new thing for this. We're not done. I need to prove that B, C are congruent to A, T. But now when I look, I can see if I've written this correctly that in fact B, C does correspond with D, A. Remember the order, this is the same as segment D, A. So I could switch this around and it would be the same thing. So those are in fact corresponding segments. I can also see it in the picture. This side here spins around and corresponds with this side. And now that I've shown these triangles are exactly the same, that the triangles are congruent, that tells me that this pair of sides has to be the same, of course, because the triangles are congruent, the sides have to be the same. So I can deduce BC is congruent to DA. And underneath this box, we are simply going to write corresponding parts. I'll abbreviate it like that because corresponding is a long word. So notice that we're still doing triangle congruence. Same fashion as the other day. Pair of sides, pair of angles, pair of sides. I get my triangle congruence and now we're just going one step farther. We say because the triangles are congruent, therefore the corresponding parts are the same. Let me do one more example. Here's my second example. So I mean, let's look over my what I asked to do. So first I want to mark the givens. So I'm told X is the midpoint of AC and of BD. Hmm. So what does midpoint mean? Midpoint divides a segment into congruent parts. So when I say X is the midpoint of AC, then I can look at A to C and say, okay, that's divided into congruent parts. So I can tick mark that and that. It also says X is the midpoint of BD. So when I trace from B to D, B to D is also cut into congruent parts. So I can say this is congruent to that. So that finishes my givens. I've marked my givens. Next it was Look for two triangles I can prove congruent that will give me what I want. Well, again, this is not difficult. There's only two triangles in the picture. And I'm trying to show that B and D angles B and D are going to be congruent. The third step was complete my information to get SAS, SSS, or ASA. So what I already have tick marked here is I have a pair of sides and another pair of sides. I have SS. I need to come up with something else. So the question is, is, am I going to do SAS or am I going to do SSS? SSS won't work here. To get SSS, of course, I would need to be able to add tick marks to CD and to AB. 
So I need to come up with some reason why CD and AB were the same. But I have no reason. There's nothing told in my givens, and I don't have any prior information that would tell me, oh yes, yes, AB and CD in this picture must be the same. If you find yourself arguing, well, they have to be the same. Because, you look, if these match and these match, then if you find yourself arguing that way, then you're trying to use triangle congruence to argue something. But remember, we're trying to prove the triangle congruence, so we can't use the triangle congruence yet. We have to prove it first. SAS will work here. If I look at the triangle over here, I would need a reason, I would need to be able to put an arc on this. This is the angle between those two sides. If I look at this triangle over here, I would need to put an arc in this angle. This is the angle between those two sides. And I do have a reason why those angles are the same. Those angles are the same because of vertical angles. Remember when you make this X shape, the opposite angles, the vertical angles always are congruent. So there is my SAS pattern, and this apparently is another SAS one. So let's write up the proof. So first I have a pair of sides, AX is congruent to CX. And what told me that those were the same, I'm not quoting the givens, instead what told me that those were the same is that X is a midpoint. So I'll say midpoint of AC just to be extra clear. That's my pair of sides. The angles in my SAS are this angle, angle BXA and angle CXD. And that's because those are vertical angles. Then finally, my other pair of sides in my SAS pattern is BX and XD, or I'll say BX and DX. And those are congruent because the midpoint statement. Now it's the midpoint of BD. There's pair of sides, pair of angles, pair of sides. Knowing all that information in the correct order, in the SAS order, is enough to tell me that the two triangles are congruent. So again, let's make sure we get the order right. So for this triangle, I'll go in this order. Pass the one tick mark and the two tick mark side. And then in the other triangle, I'll go in the same order. Pass the one tick mark and the two tick mark side. That tells me how to name my two triangles. I have triangle AXB. congruent to triangle by SAS. And then, what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove angle B and angle D are congruent. Well, angle B and angle D apparently correspond according to this. Angle B here and angle D here. So in fact, I can deduce that angle B and angle D are the same because they are corresponding parts of those now shown to be congruent triangles. So I'll say these are corresponding parts. And that completes that proof.